Okay. What? This is a move I've never seen. Queen g5. So, black is being very direct with me. Welcome to what is essentially a continuation of the Rapid Rating Climb series, but in a bit of a new form, because the past several episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb, I just, I've just played terribly, and I've just lost several winning positions for absolutely no reason. So, this is kind of like a, like a rebirth of the Rapid Rating Climb, where I just need to get back to 2000, because my ego can't stand a 1 at the start of my rating, so... Let's see what we can make happen. I'll try and explain my thought process while I'm playing. So hopefully it's educational and somewhat entertaining. Let's get into the game. Okay, we have the white pieces. And I've been playing a lot of English recently. But I think we're just going to go back to the ye old 1 e4. My opponent goes e5. And of course, if you're an OG of the channel, then you know that the Vienna is what we're going to play. My opponent doesn't go knight f6, which would have allowed us to play f4, the Vienna Gambit. Instead, the Max Lang defense with knight c6. We're going to go bishop to c4. And a big, like, a big point of the Vienna is trying to control the d5 square so that black can't play d5. And we can kind of go for d3, delay the move knight f3, at least in the way that I like to play the Vienna. I love to, de to delay knight f3 for as long as possible. So that I can go f4. Okay, what? This is a move I've never seen. Queen g5. So black is being very direct with me. The first move that comes to mind is knight to f3, inviting black to take on g2, and then going rook to g1. And after a move like queen h3, I think we can just play knight g5, and this is just a fork. So we're going to go knight f3. I don't think black can take on g2. I think you have to be pragmatic when you see moves like this. I've never seen this in my life. So my first thought, well, my first thought is this is a bit wrong. Why is this wrong? I considered queen f3, but then like knight d4, and this is a bit of a problem. So then you go, okay, why why have I never seen that? There is probably a reason I've not seen that before. So yeah, I think just rook g1 and black is in major trouble. Because the queen has to go to h3. Now in some lines, I will show you after the game actually, so make sure you stick around for the analysis. But in some lines, a similar thing happens, but white goes to queen g4 instead of black going queen g5, but it's not quite the same because there's the inclusion of bishop to c4, so it works in a different way. We could go bishop to f7 check, and if king takes, then knight to g5 forks the king, the king and the queen. But if bishop f7, my opponent's going to go king to d8, and that's not quite as effective. So I think knight g5 first may be better, but then he can play queen queen to h2 though, because the knight takes its eyes off of h2, which comes with an attack on the rook. Which I don't love. I don't love. So maybe bishop f7 check first is better, so that the knight maintains defense. Bishop f7, of course the king can't take because of knight g5 check. King d8 is the natural follow-up move, obviously. King e7 just blocks in the bishop. Bishop f7, king d8. And maybe we just play a move like rook to g3. Maybe we can play rook g3 now. Okay. What if we do that? Rook g3. My opponent goes queen h4. And we can't play bishop to f7 and we can't play knight g5 because he will trade queens with us. Interesting. What it? Mm. I'm just thinking, what if we start with knight d5 or knight to b5? Let's say knight b5. Just threatening knight to c7. Bishop d6. Maybe we can play something like rook takes g7. If knight b5, king d8, 
then knight g5 forks the queen and the f7 square, which could threaten some pretty nasty things. I think it's important to try and be as accurate as possible here. Bishop f7 is definitely playable, but this might be even stronger. Knight d5 does take up the e7 square, which is useful in case we want to try and mate black. But I don't think it works. It also blocks the bishop's scope on f7. So knight b5 is probably better. Let's play it. Let's play it. And I think this kind of doesn't let black off the hook. Bishop f7 check is certainly a fine move. Like, it's a good move. But after king d8, we can't... Basically, my issue is that the bishop is on the f7 square. That's my issue. So after knight g5, we don't actually have a threat of knight f7 because the bishop is there. And if we do something like if the bishop goes to f7, the king goes to d8, and we get knight g5 in, we also can't clear the f7 square with bishop to g8, rook g8, because then knight to f7, it does deliver a check, but it no longer attacks the rook because the rook's taken on g8. But I don't think it's quite as effective. I think knight b5 is stronger because... We go after c7, my opponent can't play knight a6, which is the natural way to defend. And if bishop to d6, then he relinquishes control of g7. If king to d8, then I think knight g5 is better, because after queen to h2, knight f7 comes with check. Previously, knight f7 did not come with check if we play it straight away in this position, because after queen h2, we can't take on f7 because the king is on e8 rather than d8, and then my opponent can play queen takes g1. So I think we may be able to move order black, essentially, into a worse position than what he might have been expecting, because the moves that you calculate, I think, um, if you're the black pieces, if you're going to play queen g5 after knight f3, if you're going to take on g2, you have to have calculated um, queen g2, rook g1, queen h3, and either knight g5 or bishop f7 and king d8. And I think bishop f7, king d8, probably better for white, but not as good as knight b5. So I hope you guys understand why I've done it this way, because I think it's a bit more accurate, and I think we actually pose more problems to black than if we're more direct. I'm just going to pull my window in a bit, because... Um, it's kind of cold. Um, anyway, I actually just wanted to address something that I saw. Um, someone sent me a message on chess.com, actually, saying that my videos were, like, unintentionally ASMR. Is that, like, a common thing that people are thinking? Because if so, I don't know if that's weird or if that's just flattering, but, hey, I guess um, we're covering all bases on the Chess Centurion channel. I don't think my opponent considered this move knight b5. I really don't, because he's he played all of his previous moves very, very quickly, and now he's taking an awful long time. I mean, don't get me wrong, I spent like three minutes on this move, because I've never seen this position before, but I think this might be why I've never seen this position before. And after, after knight f3, the thing is, if my opponent doesn't take on g2, then he just didn't. It, he just has to admit that he was wrong. He has to play a move like Queen G six, and then we just have a better version of an Italian, really, because we can't play F four because our knight is already on F three. But the queen is just misplaced. The queen should not be out here like this. We can just castle. If someone like Queen G six, we could probably just castle. We can maybe go for Knight H four with tempo on the queen to get into F five. We can, you know, if something like castle, knight f6, we can maybe, obviously the queen's on g6, we can maybe just play a move like d3 and keep developing. Okay, my opponent goes for knight to f6. That is surprising. So he does not address this. If we take knight c7, king d8, Knight b8, we're up a rook because we win our pawn back from um, g2. My opponent can take on e4. He's not actually threatening anything though. 
So that is, of course, an option. Bishop f7 is still a move that we can play because, again, the king can't take because of knight g5 with the fork. So bishop f7, probably king d8, but then knight to b5 is a bit of a wasted move, I feel like. We obviously did take our eyes off of the d4 pawn. He also maybe has knight g4 in some scenarios. Maybe. Hmm. We could just consider the move d3 and just say to black, like, look, you haven't actually addressed the problems. And if I just stop knight e4, then where is your counterplay? d3, maybe d6, trying to go bishop g4. Maybe that's the idea. If d3, king d8, then we can just go for knight g5, same as before. And black still has the same issues. We also prepare to get this bishop out to a square like g5, which could cause more problems for black. Of course, we could do this and just let my opponent take on e4. And then we could just play d3 then. And he doesn't have any threats. He'd just have to retreat. Maybe I'm trying to fixate on, like, a checkmating attack, and I should just be going, like, okay, I can just win this rook. But if we go d3, I don't see what our opponent does, because if king d8, knight g5, that looks crushing. If d3, bishop d6, stopping knight c7, what was my idea there? Oh, yeah, rook g7. That's pretty good. <sighs> but the more direct approach is just to take on c7. This is actually quite difficult. Okay, we, I'm just going to consider knight g4 once again. But yeah, I don't like queen h2. Don't like giving him that tempo on the rook. We could go rook g3, queen h5. Pinning, well not pinning, but like putting some pressure on the knight. And the queen is behind the knight, of course. Also, knight e4 would come with tempo if we play rook g3. Knight c7, king d8, knight a8, knight e4. We could consider knight g5 in that position. We fork the queen, the knight, and the f7 square. Knight c7, king d8, knight a8, knight e4, knight g5, queen h2. Knight f7. Something like king e7, rook f1, and we defend f7. That is pretty good. I think, I think black actually has no threats. I don't think he has any threats. He looks kind of active. With this kind of move. Maybe he wants to go bishop c5 in some position. But I just don't think it works. I don't think I've missed anything. Knight e4 looks a little scary. But I don't think it carries a threat. Or at least I hope it doesn't carry a threat. Knight e4. Maybe he wants to go like bishop c5 and gang up on f2. We could just go queen to e2. To attack the knight. an option. D3 again looks pretty strong. Knight G5. Am I missing anything? Knight G5, Queen H2. Because then he gangs up on F7, right? I can't really take here because he'll take my rook. Does knight g5 work? Does knight g5 work? That's the question. Again, d3 might just be simpler, though. Because then we don't... Although, we're offering a trade if we do this. Knight g5, queen h4, knight e4, queen e4, queen e2. That's an awful lot of material to be up. <clears throat> 
Queen e2 straight away. Maybe he just goes for a move like f5 there. And then in the future, knight d4 might come with tempo if we put the queen on e2. Knight g5 does relinquish defense of h2, but I think we can try and do some concrete calculation here. Knight g5. Okay. If he takes, and we take, then we just up a rook. Right, we just up a rook. Rook h2, sorry, queen h2. Uh, it's a little bit dicey, honestly, because we can't bring the rook back to g1. So what if we just go d3 and sort of just get ready to castle queenside? If d3, let's say knight d6, because knight f6 doesn't do anything. Um, so knight f6 I think is fine. Because if uh, d3, knight f6, I'm just going to go bishop g5 to facilitate more trades. I think. I think that's the cleanest way. d3, knight d6 attacks the bishop. We could just play bishop e3 and just let him take us. Again, I don't think I'm missing anything. It's also quite useful that he can't play bishop g4 to put pressure on the knight because he hasn't moved his d-pawn yet. And we're not really giving him time to. If he plays a move like d5 now, then we just take here and the pawn is pinned and bishop g4 is just met with either rook g3 or bishop 2e2. Okay, that looks incorrect. That just looks wrong. Can't we just go c3? c3, I think his only idea might be knight c3, pawn c3, bishop c3, bishop d2, bishop a1, and with the idea of overloading the queen. Let's calculate, c3, knight c3, pawn c3, bishop c3, bishop d2, bishop a1. Can we go knight g5? So that the queen no longer has to defend the knight. Okay, let's say queen h2, attacking the rook. Knight f7, king e7, not king e8, because then knight c7 would come with check. So king e7, bishop g5, king f8, the rook is still under attack. Mm, that's kind of complicated. Can we just go bishop d2? Well, then if he trades, like knight takes, knight takes, then he can just go queen h2. I don't love it. I don't really want to give him that option. So c3, knight c3. Pawn c3, bishop c3. What about king e2? Or is that a bit much? No, okay. Pawn c3, knight c3, pawn c3, bishop c3, knight, bishop d2. Um, bishop a1. What if we just take and then take? What's the material count? We have a bishop, a bishop, a queen, a knight, a rook, and he has a rook, a bishop, a knight, and a queen. So we would be up a piece. How is that position? C3, knight C3, bishop, sorry, pawn C3, bishop C3, bishop D2, bishop A1, queen A1, queen F3. I don't know. I'm going to go c3. I think this is okay. I think this is okay. Yeah, knight c3, that's the logical move. Because like I said, they're trying to overload the queen. Go pawn to c3. Okay, bishop c3, bishop d2. 
to take knight g5, queen h2, knight f7, king e7. Maybe we can just take the rook, actually. And if queen g1, we just play king e2. Uh, king, queen g4 is kind of annoying, though. What about knight d2? I don't think that actually helps at all. I don't think that's useful. Wait, if bishop d2, bishop a1, can we actually just throw in rook g3? Ooh, that might be good. I think we have to go for disposition anyway, but throwing in rook g3 might be an issue for black. Rook g3. Let's say queen f5 to keep an eye on the knight. Then we just take. Yeah, yeah. But this is just winning. Because the point is we attack the queen. And we're essentially, what we're doing is defending the knight with tempo. So that we can just go ahead and take this bishop. This bishop can't come back to c3 to get out with check because our bishop is obviously on d2. So, uh, queen h5, queen a1, and we're up, what, like two pieces, which is winning. Our king, you can argue, is somewhat unsafe, but the king can just walk over to a square like g1, and black simply doesn't have the firepower. Does not have the firepower. Yeah, let's just take. Everything is defended. Our extra piece. Well, we are, we're actually up two pieces. But our opponent has three pawns. So this is interesting because our knight is actually kind of out of the game. It can't get back in. But it's also very difficult for black to try and attack the knight. If he tries something like b6, bishop to b7. Let's say he goes b6. Let's say he does it. Well, then we can just play a move like knight g5. And how does he defend f7? e4 is an interesting move. Because if we take, then... I mean, after take, we could just go bishop to e2, but it's kind of passive. That does... Op the movie um, e4 does open up the possibility of queen to g7. Which obviously attacks the rook. So if he takes our knight, we take his rook, and we're completely winning. Queen g7, let's say rook e8. Well, then I think we can just go queen g5 and force a queen trade. Again, my opponent has no checks on me, which is very useful. And I also like queen g5, because if queen takes, we can go knight takes, so we actually keep the extra knight. We could also just consider this, but then he just takes with check, so... Yeah, let's do this. Nice and simple. After queen takes, we could actually take with the bishop. We could actually take with the bishop because he has to go knight e7 to block. Because our knight is controlling the c7 square. So the king is almost mated. Uh, knight to e5 threatens mate. We could try and be simple with a move like bishop to f7 as well. Let's go knight e5. Okay. And yeah, my opponent resigns, so that's a pretty solid game. I don't know whether we played perfectly or not. There's a good chance that I slept, slept up, slipped up a couple of times, but a convincing game nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoyed, and let's get into the analysis. All right, so a very successful game, and we'll dive into the analysis now. I would encourage you to stick around for the analysis, by the way, because... I guarantee there's going to be some interesting lines. I'm just going to correct this graphic a bit. Very professional, I know. Okay, <laughs> anyway. So e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6. Um, if my opponent had gone knight f6, then we get a classic Vienna Gambit with f4. And I would encourage you to check out the playlist below, which has all my videos on the channel, which feature the Vienna game and the Vienna Gambit. So you can see what happens in those lines by checking out those videos. But our opponent goes knight c6, we go bishop c4, and our opponent plays queen g5, which is just incredibly strange. It's just really weird. Bishop c5 is known as, I well, it doesn't have an official name, but it's like basically the copycat variation. 
And you get some very um very interesting stuff with queen to g4 in these positions. Because I said queen g5 was a mistake, but I also mentioned that in some lines white goes queen g4, and this is one of those lines. And it's really difficult for black to just not be worse. <laughs> because the most natural like if I give you this position, like what is the most natural move? White's gone queen g4. So what's he doing? He's threatening um queen to g7. And the difference is you can't play knight to f6. Because after queen g7, you don't have rook g8. Because with the bishop on c4, queen f7 is mate. So you have to go rook f8. And then after like d3, um, bishop to g5 is on the cards. And white is just up a pawn and is better. So if you get this position with the black pieces, you might think, okay, queen f6 then. We defend g7, we threaten mate. There's some very crazy lines after knight d5, just giving up the f2 pawn with check, going king d1, and then trying to make something happen over on the um, over on the black position. Again, some very crazy lines, but typically these favor white quite significantly. And also, really important, the bishop defends the f1 square, which would be mate if you don't do that. So after queen to g4, knight f6 doesn't really work. Queen f6 does work, but it's very dangerous. The best moves are like g6, which is just weakening the dark squares because the bishop's out on c5 and can't go to g7 easily. Or knight d4, just ignoring the frets and going queen f6. And you get some good development with black. Bishop to d3 is the best move for white here. I've had this position once or twice, I think. Not many people actually know it. And then black just tries to put some pressure on the white position. And it's about equal because black has some nice play. But again, not many people know that. And my opponent goes queen g5 here. And it's not the same because there is no bishop on c5. So after knight f3, my opponent has to just move the queen. He needs to retreat to a square like e7 or d8 or go back to like g6 or h5. But like I said, this is just good for white. White can actually strike immediately immediately with d4 according to the computer. If something like takes, 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 white's apparently just better. And after queen g2, rook f1, white just has a ton of development. He's got some threats coming, something like bishop f4 or bishop e3, castle queen side. He, white is just developed so fast, and white and um, black is lacking development, and his queen is most likely going to be a target. Queen g2 here is not the same as queen g7 in the previous lines, because there is no bishop on c5 threatening mate on f2. So, I can just play rook g1. Funnily enough, bishop takes f7 first is a move. Because after king f7 and rook g1, your opponent can't play queen h3 because of check. So he would have to give up the queen for the rook and basically have a bishop and a rook for a queen, which of course favours the white pieces. I didn't actually consider changing the move order around like this. Of course, after bishop f7 in this position, black could just go king to d8. And after like rook g1, queen h3, you would get the same position as we did in the, well, as we could have done. In the game after rook g1 queen h3 it turns out i'm gonna let the computer think for a minute here but it told me initially that knight b5 was a miss and bishop f7 check is actually better of course black can't take this because of knight g5 but i thought after king d8 white doesn't actually have an attack and i thought i could do better than this now apparently after rook g3 so the queen can't Ah, okay, this is the difference. The queen can't go to h5 because the bishop now covers that. I had only thought about it in this move order, and then this no longer works because the queen defends, although you can throw in rook g5, apparently, and then knight b5. But regardless, after bishop f7, king d8, rook g3, your opponent has to go to h6, and then you can play moves like knight d5 or even just d4, opening up this attack. And after like queen d6, something like knight d5. So this would just be very, very good for white. And I hadn't considered this. I hadn't considered this. Instead, what I thought was going to happen if I went bishop f7, king d8, and I played a move like d3, 
I thought this wasn't actually that good for white, and I am correct. Like this, you can see the evaluation bar drop immediately after I play the move d3. It's at like 2.9, 3.0, and it goes down to um, about 1.5 after I play d3, because like d6 and bishop to g4 might be a problem, but basically black survives. I know I'm up a pawn. Well, I'm not actually up a pawn because black took on g2, but I have way more activity. And the Black King obviously can't castle. But I thought I could do better with knight b5. And don't get me wrong, bishop f7 is better if I see rook g3. And the fact that the queen can't go to h5, but I didn't see that. And, I mean, that's just the reality of chess. You can't see everything. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to go knight b5. Because this looks really good. <laughs> right? I'm going to threaten knight c7. And if king d8 is played, then I'm going to play knight g5. Because after queen h2, I can go knight f7 with check. Now that's important because if I'd have gone knight g5 in this position, then queen h2, I can't take on f7 with the knight because black just takes on g1. So I'd have to go bishop f7 and after like king d8, I'm a bit misplaced. My pieces are a bit misplaced. I'd have to probably bring my knight back and then, I don't know, the queen can go to a square like h3 and I just lost the h2 pawn for like no reason whatsoever. So that was why I didn't go knight g5 first, because I wanted to force the king to do d8 so that I could take on f7 with check. And my idea was, my idea was, after knight b5, king d8, knight g5, queen h2, knight f7, not king to e8, because then knight c7 comes with check, so king e7, and my point was this bishop is now blocked in, which means that it's going to be difficult for black to try and create counterplay on a square like f2. And I can just play rook f1. And this was my idea. And I thought, I'm up a pawn. His king is weak. My pieces are swarming. I'm controlling some important squares. His rook's under attack. How does he defend the rook? And I mean, he can't. His best idea is knight f6, and I just take the rook, and then I'm just up a rook. So this was my plan. My opponent went knight f6 though, which complicated matters a little bit. Again, I should have taken on f7, or if you can't take because of knight g5, and if you go for king to d8, then again the idea is rook d3, the fact that the bishop covers the h5 square, which I missed. And if um, something like queen h6 is played, then again d4 opens up an attack on the queen. The queen actually can't go to d6 this time, because knight b5 is included, and the queen is actually just lost and has to sacrifice herself for the bishop. So she would have just been better giving herself up for the rook. And of course, white is completely winning. Again, I missed this. I took on c7, king d8. We're still completely winning. And I just take the rook. And here I'm like, look, I'm just up a whole rook. And I don't believe you have any counterplay. You might have some active pieces potentially. But I don't believe it's enough. My opponent takes on e4. And I was, I was stuck between a few moves here. I thought I didn't actually consider bishop e5, which is apparently the best move. I thought queen e2 might be decent, just attacking the knight, defending the bishop, defending the knight. But after like knight d6, I mean, it's fine, but I don't know. I liked the queen on d1, because if the queen goes to e2, then maybe knight d5 in the future comes with a tempo. So bishop f7 is a move, but I think it's a bit greedy. I did also consider knight g5, but it felt a little bit flimsy. Now, if my opponent played a move like queen h4, then trying to defend the knight, basically, then this is very good. We just take on f7, or we could even just trade on e4 and go for a move like queen e2, and we're all right. We're all right. But the problem was, and the reason why I rejected the move knight g5, was actually just knight takes g5. And the point of knight g5 was to force a trade, but it's not actually that good. Because after knight g5, rook g5, queen h2, I can't bring the rook back to g1. I didn't like this position, and I'm correct to not like this position. The computer agrees with me and thinks the best move for white is just queen h5, forcing a queen trade, and just trying to be better, I suppose. White is up. What is white up, actually? I think a rook for two pawns, but the knight is also trapped. And it's kind of impossible to get it out. The computer thinks that black is marginally worse. But of course I should be doing far better than that. Which is why I chose the move d3. I thought it was way simpler. Because after a move like knight d6. I can play rook 
to g3. I can drop the bishop back. I can play a move like bishop to e3. I thought it was very easy. Something like bishop e3, and if my opponent trades, then yo, thank you for the open d file. <laughs> like, I'm going to castle queenside anyway and get a rook to d1, and it's going to be great. Again, the computer thinks that I'm, I'm evaluating that pretty correctly. So my opponent goes bishop to b4, which I thought was actually a really interesting idea. Because if I try and drop my knight back, for example, then h2 hangs, and that's no good. Because it's similar to the previous position. So I mean, like, queen h2, rook f1, my position's very cramped, essentially. Apparently knight g3 is a move. That's crazy. Attacking the rook. And if I take, then does black have perpetual? But well, this is mate. So I have to go rook f2, and then black just has perpetual. That's crazy. But I go c3. And by the way, if um, I'd have gone bishop to d2, then the same sort of problem would have ensued after knight d2, knight d2, and queen to h2, rook f1. The position just isn't that nice. But maybe it's playable. I saw no need to allow that. I thought that I thought this couldn't possibly work. I saw his idea, of course, of knight c3, because if he doesn't play knight c3, then it's game over. If he moves the bishop, I take the knight, and if he moves the knight, then I take the bishop. This is just very easy to see. So his like by process of elimination, I could see he had to try and do something like radical with knight c3. So knight c3, pawn c3, bishop c3, and I considered to move king e2. But I didn't like the fact that black could play a move like knight d4 in the future, or that he could open up this bishop um, with a move like d6 or d5 to get to g4 and put immense pressure on my knight because my queen is no longer defending it. So I didn't like these possibilities, and instead I chose bishop to d2. And after bishop to a1, I thought, okay, worst case scenario, we get a position like this, and maybe I can convert it. I also considered the move knight g5 to just attack the queen and go after f7. And it's something like queen h2, knight f7, king to e8. But if king e8, I actually have knight c7. So probably king to e7 is more accurate. And I considered bishop g5, king f8. This is what I was calculating. I didn't see the follow up here. Apparently queen g4 is completely winning. But okay, that's kind of complicated. Rook f1 also maintains the advantage. But rook g3 just answers all of white's problems. It makes things very easy. Oh, and by the way, if something like knight g5, queen h2, knight f7, king e7, I wanted to consider knight to h8, but apparently that just doesn't work. Oh, yeah, because after, if um here, 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 then I assume knight d4, and we're in big trouble. <laughs> we're in big trouble. So, yeah, rook g3, like I said. It's great. Also, rook g7 is apparently better, which, I mean, that's kind of crazy. But we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that. This is far simpler because it's just a double attack. It's a double attack, and the knight is now defended. The problem with queen a1 first is that the queen takes her eyes off of the knight. So rook g3 answers all the problems. Queen f5 or queen h5 were the moves I was considering, just keeping pressure on the knight. But it it's not enough. We take on a1, not actually the best move, but the simplest. And then e4. Black tried to pose some problems, which I think was quite practical. If I'd have taken queen e4, I was going to play bishop to e2, saving the bishop. And then maybe, you know, black can try and build some pressure. Maybe I have to play a move like knight g1. Bishop e3 is also an idea just to block the file. But I'm just inviting unnecessary pressure onto myself instead. I thought, okay, e4, it threatens the knight, but if I attack his rook with queen g7, he can't take the knight, because I just take the rook. And again, black is in massive trouble. Bishop g5 is apparently mate in 15. I did not see mate in 15, of course, but it's clearly winning. The position is clearly winning, because black runs out of firepower, essentially. So he goes rook e8. And then the simplest move in my mind was queen g5. Something like knight g5 might have been better objectively. This forces a queen trade. We go bishop g5, knight e7 is the only real move. And then we go knight e5. My opponent resigns because we're up like, what, two pieces? 
for like a couple of pawns. Obviously, that's nowhere near enough compensation. My opponent would have to play something like d6 to give himself the d7 square if I take on f7. Apparently, I can just take on e4 because if de5, rook d3, bishop d7, bishop b5, and all these pins going on and the knight controlling c7, the game is completely over, which is pretty hilarious. But I could have also just been nice and simple and played a move like knight f7 and after king d7, just take on e4, and I'm up way too much material. I'm up two whole pieces. My opponent, of course, resigns, and it's a pretty solid attacking game. Uh, my opponent makes a mistake in the opening, and the reason that I thought it was a mistake is because I never see this ever. And I also know that because I play the, the queen to g4 line after bishop to c5 in the previous position, that that only works because we threaten mate on f7 after queen g7 and rook to g8. And because my opponent doesn't have a bishop on c5, I can logically think, okay, there's a problem with this. How are we going to punish it? So there's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.